The film begins with four college students joking around as they drive. Suddenly, they see lightning and one of the boys starts filming the scene. They realize that a huge tornado is headed toward them and try to escape in the car. However, the tornado quickly takes them and their car in its lap, after which the scene ends. The next scene of the film introduces the Titus Storm Chaser team, who travels around making documentary films about life. The team is made up of three camera operators, Jacob, Lucas, and Daryl, as well as the meteorologist, Allison, and a friend, Pete. We see Pete listening to a news report in the car, which says that a tornado hit Oklahoma the previous night and killed four students. These are the same students we saw at the beginning of the film. Pete expressed anger at the fact that they had not shot any tornado videos in the last year and last night had been another missed opportunity. Allison then informed him that a tornado was soon to touch down in a place called Silverstone. Upon hearing this, the two decided to head in the hopes of catching the tornado on camera. We are then introduced to Donnie, a young boy whose family consists of his younger brother, Trey, and their father, Gary. Donnie's mother had died in an accident prior to the events of this story. It is also revealed that Gary is the principal of the story that both Donnie and Trey attend. So Gary gave the assignment to Donnie and Trey to make a video for a time capsule that they'll all watch 25 years later. We're then shown two people named Donk and Revis who love making dangerous videos on the internet. Now we see them making videos of some dangerous stunts, but then we see Pete's truck drive by and they decide to go after him. They know that chasing him would make a good video. On the other side, Donnie sees his friend, Caitlin, sad at school and asks her why is she upset. Caitlin tells Donnie that she needs to make a video about the closed paper mill for her school project, but she hasn't finished it yet. Donnie decides to help her and tells his brother Trey to shoot the video of the time capsule alone. After that, they go to the paper mill together. Meanwhile, Pete is listening to the news on TV, which says that a tornado will head for their river site. But Allison thinks a tornado won't come there. But here in Silverstone, as they conversed, large hailstones unexpectedly starts falling from the sky. This gives Pete's team the indication that a tornado was approaching, so they go to investigate. They saw a tornado along the way, and Donnie and Revis chased after it to get footage. However, they eventually get caught up in the tornado as well. On the other side, Pete's car is specially designed to withstand wind speeds of up to 180 kilometers per hour, making it the perfect choice for shooting a video of a tornado. By parking his car on the ground in the path of the tornado, Pete was able to capture a truly unique perspective. But then, tornado changes his direction and heads towards the school. Gary and the other teachers starts to bring all the other students inside the school when they see the weather is deteriorating rapidly due to the tornado. And then, a tree falls inside the school because of the tornado, after which everyone sits with their heads down to take cover. After that, tornado reaches the school, but everyone manages to save themselves. After the tornado has passed, Gary looks for Donnie and asks Trey where he is. Trey tells Gary that he has gone somewhere with Caitlin. Gary calls Donnie and Donnie tells him that he is at the paper mill with Caitlin. However, communication gets cut off before Gary could mention anything about the tornado. Subsequently, Donnie starts making videos with Caitlin. While Donnie and Caitlin were exploring the paper mill, the tornado suddenly arrived and destroyed the entire facility. Fortunately, the two of them were unharmed, but they became trapped in the debris. Gary then takes Trey out to find Donnie. Now everyone seems to think that the tornado season is over, but Allison tells Pete that another tornado is coming, or more than one may come this time. Now Pete gets happy to hear Allison say this because he had another chance to make a tornado video again, and then he and his team go towards the new tornado, and Gary and Trey are also there. Then they witness a tornado happening again, and Allison being pulled towards it by the powerful winds, but Gary manages to grab her hand in time and saves her. After the tornado passes, Gary's car has broken down and he asks Pete and his team for a lift to the paper mill. Pete refuses, but Allison tells him that the tornado is now moving towards the same paper mill, so he agrees to get Gary there. Because to make a good video of a tornado, 
he has to go there too. On the other hand, where Donnie and Caitlin are trapped, the water pipe bursts and starts filling the place with no way out for them. Now again, we see Gary, Pete, and everyone else heading towards the paper mill. But suddenly, the tornado gets all around them and the tornado changes course and follow Allison's van. Gary was also in the same van. Now the tornado hits their van and turns it over. Luckily, everyone in the van survives the tornado. Now we see how the tornado is wrecking havoc everywhere, causing a fire to break out. The tornado then pulls the fire inside itself and turns into a tornado fire. Jacob walks over to capture the scene on the camera, but is pulled over by the fire tornado and burned to death. Now that Jacob has passed away, the rest of the group heads to a nearby church. Allison is taking the loss the hardest, placing the blame on Pete. Daryl tries to explain that it wasn't Pete's fault and that Jacob died because of him. He persuaded Jacob not to give up the job he was scared of from the beginning. Now after that, Allison arrives at the paper mill, carrying Trey and Gary. When they arrive there, Gary tries to quickly remove the debris. As Donnie and Caitlin are completely submerged and a heavy rain iron beam was not moving away from them all, Trey removes it with the help of a van, after which they find Caitlin, but Donnie was still down in the water. Gary jumps into the water to save Donnie and pulls him out with great difficulty. Donnie was not responding, so Gary starts giving him CPR. Luckily, this helps Donnie to regain consciousness. After that, Trey and Gary hug Donnie. And Pete also arrives with his car, and they all get into the car and start to leave. Along the way, they observe two tornadoes combining to form a massive EF5 tornado. Depending on the intensity and velocity of the tornado, each is categorized into one of six types. EFO through EF5. Which EF5 being the most damaging with wind speeds reaching up to 320 kilometers per hour? The tornado was quickly approaching the school, so they arrived at the school and evacuated all the children and staff onto a bus and left immediately. On the way, they notice that everyone is trying to leave the area via car. When they turn around, they see that the tornado has completely destroyed the school. Suddenly, a tower fell on the road due to the storm blocking the entire path. As the tornado approaches, everyone grows panicked and takes refuge underground through a nearby manhole. We are then shown that the tornado was carrying several vehicles as well as large airplanes. And then all of a sudden, a truck comes and hits a drainage lattice which makes it cover loose. Seeing this, Pete somehow got out of the place and parked his car in front of the lattice. This method works for a while, but because it was an EF5 tornado, Pete's car doesn't stay there for long. Pete's car then flies over the tornado and he sees the sun. But the next moment, the tornado knocks him to the ground with his car and he died. After a while, the tornado gradually weakens and disappears on its own. Coming out, people see only destruction all around the city. In the next scene, we see Donnie and Trey interview survivors through time capsules. And now, Gary, Trey, and Donnie are even closer to each other. Pete's documentary is also completed. Having already given all recordings to Ellison, helps Pete's dream of making a good documentary come true, which was his last wish. In the final scene of the film, we see Revis and Donk high up in a tree. They were both fortunate to be spared despite being hit by a tornado, and their camera is still intact, which means they have also got a good video out of the ordeal. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have a movie you'd like us to recap, let us know in the comments. See you next time.